In a previous video, we showed you a few simple tests that you can do to track your fitness progression using a power meter. Well, in this video, we're going to take things one step further and explain some of the zones that you can train in in order to gain that fitness. Back when I was racing, I always tended to use the seven zones set out by Dr. Andrew Coggan, co-author of Training and Racing for the Power Meter. It's also the same zones which are used by Training Peaks, the most popular analytical tool online for cycling enthusiasts. For all but one of the zones that we're going to go through today, it will be expressed as a percentage of your FTP or functional threshold power, what you can sustain for an hour. Or if you're using a heart rate monitor, it will be expressed as a percentage of your heart rate at that intensity. So, zone one, otherwise referred to as the active recovery zone. And as the name suggests, it's the sort of riding that you're probably going to do the day after a hard training ride or a sportive event. And to be in this zone, you need to be riding at less than 55% of your FTP or less than 68% of your threshold heart rate. So for me, with an FTP of 290 watts, a threshold heart rate of 175, I need to be riding below 160 watts on average and under 120 heart rate. This sort of riding should feel very, very easy indeed, and you should be able to hold a conversation with those around you. Zone two is the endurance zone. And to be in this one, you've got to be at 56 to 75% of FTP, or 69 and 83% of your threshold heart rate. This is where endurance athletes will spend the majority of their training time. It's slightly more intense than zone one, but you should still be able to hold a conversation and it shouldn't feel too uncomfortable. A well-trained cyclist should be able to stay in this zone for three hours or more at a time and be able to do that on consecutive days. Zone 3 is the tempo zone, and for this one you've got to be between 76 and 90% of FTP or 84 to 94% of your threshold heart rate. For this one you're going to need to concentrate a bit harder if you want to stay within the zone when you're out training. You'll still be able to get a few words out, but you might not be able to have a full-blown conversation about how good the latest GCN video is. If you fuel yourself correctly before, during and after rides like this, you might be able to get two or three days back to back at this kind of intensity. Back when I was racing, I used to do blocks of between 20 minutes and three hours at this intensity, depending on the time of year and my fitness. Well, the rest of the zones, you shouldn't really be able to hold a conversation or talk much at all. So I'm going to switch over to a voiceover, starting with this, zone four. This is the lactate threshold level and defined as 91 to 105% of your FTP or 95 to 105% of your threshold heart rate. It's worth bearing in mind, particularly for this level and above, that your heart rate will take some time to react to the effort you're putting in. So whilst the power numbers will jump as soon as you start a level 4 effort, it should take a couple of minutes for your heart rate to get into the required zone. This is the kind of effort that you might make if you are racing a time trial of between 10 and 25 miles in distance. It takes a huge amount of concentration and self-will to make sure that you stick in the zone, and it's not really the sort of thing that many people will be able to do on consecutive days. A typical training workout in this zone for me was to do two lots of 20 minutes, separated by 5 minutes of easy riding. Holding a conversation is difficult, and in fact I used to do these sessions alone in order to concentrate on the job in hand. Zone 5. This is around your VO2 max and defined as 106 to 120% of FTP and greater than 106% of threshold heart rate. Let's not beat around the bush here, this kind of effort is painful. You'll feel a burning in your legs and your breathing rate will be high. Intervals at this zone are typically between 3 and 8 minutes in duration and riding for a total of 30 to 40 minutes of this in a single session is particularly hard. For me, a common session was to do 6 by 5 minutes of zone 5 on a climb with 5 minutes recovery between each. 
It's also worth bearing in mind that due to the lag of heart rate, it might be hard to get an average heart rate within the parameters for the entire interval. Zone 6 is the anaerobic capacity level. These are intervals of 30 seconds to 3 minutes done at more than 121% of FTP. It's virtually impossible to give heart rate guidelines for this level due to the lag time. And if you thought that VO2 max intervals were hard, well these are at the next level or zone. These intervals can take a lot out of you both mentally and physically, so it's hard to do them on back-to-back -back days. Finally, zone 7 is the neuromuscular zone. There aren't defined parameters for this zone for either power or heart rate, as it's simply a case of going as hard as you can for the duration, which tends to be less than 10 seconds. This is basically sprinting, so it's useful to analyse your power afterwards and compare it to previous efforts. OK, last test of the day, and it's the 20-minute one, which we're going to use to calculate our FTP, functional threshold power, which is defined as the maximum that somebody can do for 60 minutes in duration. We're going to take the